the goodness of God, it's all around. And we need to praise him through the good and the bad times. Because he doesn't leave us and he doesn't forsake us at any time. Father God, we just thank you for your goodness. In fact, words seem inadequate. And yet, Lord, with our mouth, we say thank you. With our heart, we respond to you. And Lord, as we come around your word now, I pray, Father, that you will speak to each and every person clearly. And I pray that everyone is open to what you are going to say. Lord, we need to come into your presence with expectation of meeting with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And so we come and we thank you, Lord. We thank you that you do not fail us even when we fail you. You do not turn your back on us even when we turn our back on you. You are there with your arms wide open and you say, come. And so today we come. Amen. The power of the tongue and our words. And I've subtitled it, What is your sound that is arising within? So this is for us collectively as a voice, but also individually as a voice. So let's start with some Bible Always a good place to start. So, Proverbs 18, 20 to 21. From the fruit of their mouth, a person's stomach is filled. With the harvest of their lips, they are satisfied. The tongue has the power of life and death. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Proverbs 17, 27 to 28. The one who has knowledge uses words with restraint and whoever has understanding is even tempered. Even fools are thought wise if they keep silent and discerning if they hold their tongues. Psalm 119, verses 171 to 173. May my lips overflow with praise, for you teach me your decrees. May my tongue sing of your word, for all your commands are righteous. May your hand be ready to help me, for I have chosen your precepts. Does that still apply to us today? Very much so. What are our lips and our heart filled with. Okay, we'll go to the New Testament, James 3, 5 to 6. The tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. <laughs> Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire. A word of evil among the parts of the body, it corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire and is itself set on fire by hell. So we really need to watch what we say, what comes out of our mouths. God tells us in his word that the tongue has incredible power. We can use our tongue to bring blessing and life of curses, uh, blessings and life or curses and death. 
The saying, sticks and stones can break my bones, but words will never hurt, hurt me, is simply untrue. Because words do hurt, and words, you can't see the wound, but the wound's there. Our tongues can be the most difficult thing to control and leave us with great regret if we use our words unwisely and hurt others. How many of us have said something in anger that we later regret? And we can't take it back, can we? Because it's already made its mark on the other person. But there is hope. As the Bible also tells us that with the help of the Holy Spirit, we can have power and control over our tongues. Who can say amen to that? We are not left high and dry, as it were, because we have the Holy Spirit who resides in us and he will work through us if we allow him to do so. We can't do it on our own because before we know it, the words are out. Especially if we're angry, frustrated, or we're just not feeling right for the day, whatever that might be. But also, how many of us feel tongue-tied or ill-equipped when we go to speak to others about the goodness of God or of Jesus? We stumble over our words and then we feel embarrassed that we have attempted to speak out. That, I believe, would be pretty well everyone here. But why is this so? A sobering, insightful thought I came across recently is Satan is listening. He is listening to hear what you as a Christian are saying. He wants to know if you realise the power you have in your tongue and the fact that the words you can, can and should form are a weapon that pulls him down and sends him fleeing. And we can read about that in 2 Corinthians 10, 14. So I've meditated on that and I think it's worth all of us meditating on that and asking ourselves the question, is this so in my life? In Job 38, 12 to 13, have any of you ever given orders to the morning or shown the dawn its place that it might take the earth by the edges and shake the wicked out of it? Well, I think the answer is no. None of us have done that. But God governs with his voice. God legislates with his commands. God creates order in chaos by speaking. He did not think creation and then expect it to form. Rather, he was a vocal craftsman and spoke creation into being. And we can see that in Genesis 1 1. Whoops. And in John 1 3, verses 1 to 3. He also calls himself the Word in John 1 1. And has designed a thing so that what you also say can create. That is why Satan has battled, for, battled you for years to limit your sphere of influence by hijacking your voice. At every opportunity, he seeks to, as it were, strangle your voice to min minimise your impact and to stop you from creating breakthroughs by your decrees and declarations. How many times do we see prisoners on the movies taken captive and what do they do? One of the first things they do is they put something over or in the mouth of the person. Why? So they can't speak out. So they can't cry out for help. And that's what Satan wants to do with us. That's what he does when he strangles us. He says, I don't want you speaking. I don't want you decreeing God's word. 
or declaring his goodness. So I'm going to do everything possible to stop you. But I wonder if we truly understand or comprehend that you and I were made with a remarkable built-in anointed weapon. Your sound and your tongue. Your tongue is a weapon so strong that the enemy is in fear of even the slightest use of it culminating in, sound, in the sound it produces. The decrees, the declarations, the worship and the prayers and the truth of the preaching of the word. He hates it with a vengeance. Why do we sometimes think that we struggle with our worship? It's a weapon because it's saying to the enemy, you have no room, you're not welcome, get out. The only person that is welcome here is Jehovah, the Lord God Almighty who reigns and rules. I hope this is going to sink in. Because I'm actually trembling up here (laughs) at the moment. But that's okay. And so the Lord asks us, why are you and I not commanding our days? Why are you and I not speaking order as we rise in the morning? Why do we try to think our way through a crisis rather than ask or speak for a way to be made open? So God takes us back to to his interactions with Job in Job 38, 12 to 13 that I read out before, where he explains how he commands the morning that the wickedness might be shaken out of it. And as I've been reflecting on Jehovah's word, there is an increasing need, desire and burning within me to speak over my days as I prepare to fully enter them. Even if this is accomplished whilst driving to work or wherever I'm going. Amid the hustle and bustle of daily life, I am commanding my day. He says I can. And if he's truth, then I've got to believe him. I truly believe that you, like me, will see significant changes to what unfolds in our life as situations move from our mind to our mouth for declaration. I see this happen more and more as I prepare for the day ahead by asking God for the words to speak over people, situations and daily life in general. Last weekend, um, the leaders from the church went to the regional day and um, the regional team at the end were asked to go and minister to the people who were there. And it was an interesting experience because as I approached people, the first words that came out of my mouth were, Lord, what is it you want to say to this person? Now I'm talking about our pastors and leaders. And I had some of them look at me absolutely amazed and say, what did you just say? I said, I'm asking God what he wants to say to you. I'm not coming with any presumption that I know. And it was incredible and it was an honour. And it was humbling because some of them started to cry. And they said, that's been in my heart for so long. I thought I hadn't heard God. And here you are saying something 
that's coming straight from him. I'd never thought of going up to someone and being bold enough to say, God, what is it that you want for this person? I'm going to try that now, was what most of them said. I said, it's not trying, it's just waiting and listening for the Holy Spirit to speak. Because after all, he knows your situation better than mine, than I do. There's just an example of going to him and asking first. So today I believe angels are being released to where you are at this very moment as you listen. And I believe their mandate from God is to unwind the cords of constriction from especially your neck area and your mouth so that there is a vocal freedom and healing that rests upon you and that you will no longer battle to secure an impact with the words you speak out. This lines up with the picture I had the other week of it at our soaking meeting where I saw a person entangled and constricted in movement by chains and ropes and over the person's mouth gaffer tape, keeping their mouth closed. And then I saw angels coming and cutting and loosening the the chains and the ropes and another removing the tape from the person's mouth so that they could speak once again. That was prophetic for us. That's what he's doing with us now. Not into the future, but there's a but. We've got to allow him to do it. We've got to allow him to do what he wants to do. Then, as I've been waiting on the Lord, the Lord says to each of us today, speak my child, for Satan is listening. He wants to know whether you will crush him by your decrees and declarations or whether you will empower him by your silence. I have equipped you. Therefore you are skilled and I have made ready your tongue to form the words to speak life. And so you release them, or as you release them, the weight of heaven is contained within them because it is Jehovah who has given them to you. Yes, Satan is attentive to the moment, movements of your mouth. He is trembling in fear that you will grasp hold of the power of victory that are in the words that come from Jehovah himself. Satan knows the power of Jehovah and his words and what Jehovah has given to you through the indwelling of Yeshua and the Holy Spirit. Don't look at what was the times of struggle with reading and writing, the times of stammering and fear of speaking out. That's in the past, and I declare that now. That is in the past. Everyone in this church is going to be able to get up and they're going to be able to speak of the goodness of God and what God has done in their lives. And there are some here today who can testify to the changes they have experienced and the confidence that has come knowing that they now speak with a sure authority, confidence and the authority that only Jehovah can give and has given them. I could name a few people here today, but they know who they are. But he wants to do that for each and every one of us. And it's available to each and every one of us. Not just a selected few, but some have already asked and sought God for their breakthrough. So can I encourage you to do that too? How can I stand here and do this? It's not in my own strength. It's in his strength. Because he wants his word preached. He wants us to rise up as his bride. He wants us to push the enemy back. Because he says you can do it. But he needs the people to do it. (laughs) 
Pastor Rob said the other week, breakthroughs here already. How many really believe that? Or are you still waiting? I'm telling you, you've got to get up and you've got to get out of the boat and you've got to step out in, by faith. And that breakthrough is here. Not just big churches, but here in Druin. Psalm 118 verse 5 resonates deep within even more now where it says, Out of my distress I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me and what did he do? He set me free. Those who are free are free indeed. I'm free. Who else is free? Yes. Oh, gee, that was pretty good, wasn't it? Who else is free? Yep. yep. Thank you. Glad to see everyone's awake. Which means all the shackles, bondages, fears, hindrances and restrictions are totally gone. And in their place is freedom, confidence, authority, power, courage and a boldness to speak Jesus and to release what he has put within you, be it in prayer, be it in words of encouragement, be it in prophecy or poems or songs and his word. Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> I don't know whether you noticed that. I'm just a, bit, a wee bit excited. Just a wee bit at what God is saying today because more and more of us are being touched by the fire of God. The spark is being flamed into an unquenchable flame that no man nor the enemy can extinguish. Amen. And as we allow God to use us and release our voice with his words, we can hear the difference with our own ears and experience the incredible power and authority of Jehovah flowing through us to set many lives into transform transformation and that includes our own I think I'm preaching and I'm not I'm not no yeah I'm gonna say it. I think I'm preaching better than I've ever preached why because I'm trusting in him and the fire is raging within Oh, hold on. Go back to that one. In Psalm 29, verse 3 to 9. I did, yeah, I did Psalm 8. Ooh, hold on a minute. Go back, Janet. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord thunders over mighty, vo mighty waters. And, you know, I, I read that and I think the voice of the Lord is over the waters and his glory thunders and the Lord thunders over mighty waters. I think of the sound that we hear at Niagara Falls. And when it's in flood, it is thundering. And yet the voice of God is stronger, more powerful and still able to be heard over that. Or is that just me? I hope it's not just me. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is majestic. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks in pieces the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon leap, leap like a calf, Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord strikes with flashes of lightning. What do you, what do you, what do you, what picture are you getting of God when we read these verses? The voice of the Lord shakes the desert. The Lord shakes the desert of Kadesh. 
The voice of the Lord twists the oaks and strips the forests bare. And in his temple, all cry glory. He's majestic. He's powerful. He's got control over everything. Just at his word, he builds up or he diminishes. Again, we are being reminded that the voice of God is very, very powerful. And when he speaks, things and circumstances and lives change. And God says, this is what I have placed within you, my son and my daughter. Are we hearing it? He's placed the same within us. So speak only that which I give you to speak. Don't subtract or add to what I give you and be amazed at what I will do through you as you align yourself with me and are obedient to what I ask. I believe lives will be touched. Towns, cities, nations changed and the enemy is on the retreat. We need to keep moving forward in God. There is no pulling back or retreating at this point in time. We need to stand tall and boldly speak the words he gives us. But to do this, we need to have a healthy fear of Jehovah. Realising, acknowledging and being ever conscious of who we have given our allegiance to and who we serve. Because we can't add or subtract from what he says. He is sovereign. So we hunger and thirst after him. How? By devoting more and more time to being in his presence. Be it soaking, listening, asking, seeking, knocking, and dare I say, just enjoying his presence. I love to sit in there. I just love sitting in his presence with no agenda. Because that's when he comes and he speaks the truth into me. That's when he comes and he tells me how delighted he is with me. That's when he comes and he does sometimes correct me. Yes, I am not totally infallible at all. But just sitting in his presence and enjoying him. Closest thing to that is, as I've said before, is the marriage between husband and wife. And I know there's times we don't need to say anything but just the fact that we're sitting together is enough. Just the fact that we're there for each other. And God says, I'm here for you. Will you join me and just let me love on you? Hebrews 4.12 For the word of God is alive and active sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to the dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Bit of a sobering thought, that one. But he made my mouth like a sharpened sword in the shadow of his hand. And he hid me. Well, hold on, let me go to the right one. Start again, Isaiah 49, 2. He made my mouth like a sharpened sword. In the shadow of his hand, he hid me. He made me, like me into a polished arrow and concealed me in his quiver. So my mouth is like a sharpened sword. I'm a polished arrow that he uses if I make myself available.
This scripture is another reason why we need to seek him. And as we do, we are to carry the weightiness, clarity and sharpness that will cut through all falseness and bring revelation and clarity to situations and people's lives. I am amazed at times that when there seems to be no way when I'm working, how God gives me something to say that cuts to the heart of the matter. If I relied on my training as a counsellor, it could take months to get to the depth of the issue. Yet, in a few words from God, said by the Spirit of God and said with his love, it's remarkable and profound the effect that that can have because I can literally see the chains of bondage, captivity, almost dissolve before my eyes. I can see the torment in the person's face change dramatically to a face that is at peace. Now, it doesn't happen all the time, yet. But I'm experiencing this release more and more as the darkness within is replaced by the light of Jehovah. And that's not just with Christians. That's with everyone. You just see the change and it can be really dramatic. So, May I encourage you to be ready for the Spirit to lead you into some unexpected circumstances that he will ordain so that you can say what needs to be said. He wants to use each and every one of us. We are his vessels. We are his mouthpiece. We are his hands and feet here on earth. And he uses us. We need to have confidence that the Lord will fill our mouths with the right words at the right time. And then we can watch and be amazed at what he orchestrates and changes to the furthering of his kingdom and to his glory. That's what it's about, people. I'm just a vessel, an earthen vessel like anybody else. But he can use each and every person powerfully if we allow him to. If we but believe that he will fill our mouth with the words that he has for that person, that situation that is in front of us. I can't do it without him. You can't do it without him. This is short today. But I also heard the Lord say, it's got to be more than just speaking it out. We have to practice it. So, what we are going to do for the next number of minutes is get into groups of three. And we are going to come with a very simple question, can I pray for you? And go around within that group. Because if we don't practice this, then the enemy will come back to us and say, who do you think you are? You can't do this. And so we will start to doubt and we will start to fear. And we will let him close our mouths again and strangle us. So can I encourage you to get into groups of three and for about the next 10 minutes, 
Just pray as God leads you for whoever is in your group. And then we'll come back and I'll finish with a prayer. Okay. Yeah, sure. You've got the thing there? Just before we go, hold on. Pastor Rob. Um, this uh, week we're This week we're going to be looking at the spirit of counsel. That's what you're talking about. And I find that if I pray in the spirit, when I come to pray for people, I pray in the spirit and ask them, ask the Lord, what do I pray for this person? And when you pray in the spirit, it opens up a connection to the Holy Spirit that he can speak to you clearly. And so I just encourage you that before you pray, just pray, you can pray under your breath or you can pray softly and just say, Holy Spirit, what do you want me to pray for this person? And then pray in the Spirit. And you'll be surprised what comes into your mind and then pray that. Okay?